the idea of tissue engineering is basically that you could take plastics, add cells to it, and if you use the right kind of plastic in the right structure and add the right things to, say, the mix, the right media and so forth, then you have the ability to make virtually any tissue or organ. So you could make skin, you could make cartilage. Some of these are still theoretical at this point, but uh, you could make bone. You know, someday you might be able to make a new heart. You might be able to make spinal cord for people who are paralyzed. I mean, you could make virtually anything. We had this idea of taking uh, plastic scaffolds and adding cells to them, mammalian cells. Today, that could even be stem cells. And the whole idea is that if you do this the right way, under the right conditions, you could make, make a tissue, maybe any tissue or maybe any organ. Let's say you wanted to make a blood vessel, you'd make it a tube. If you wanted to make a new nose, you'd probably make it in a nose-like shape. And over time, actually, the plastic could probably dissolve. A lot of the strategies and materials we've developed, the plastics actually dissolve. So you end up getting a very natural kind of tissue. Already, you can make skin. Uh, and, 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 and that's quite commonly used for, for patients who are burned or have skin ulcers. Or, but a lot of the others are, there's a number of ones in clinical trials. There actually have been clinical trials for uh, making new corneas, for making new livers. Actually, one's just starting for spinal cord repair. So there's been significant progress, but as you go to the future, I mean, my hope is that there'll be many examples where you can create virtually any tissue or organ, but some of it will take a long time. I think there's a number of, 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 of big challenges with tissues and organs. I mean, one is immune rejection. Um, you know, in some cases, it, it's also, um, you know, integ integrating it with the right uh, blood vessel supply and, you know, have the right kind of innervation. We're trying to make new materials that are better for stem cells to grow on. We've been working on ways of synthesizing literally thousands of materials, creating new libraries and fishing ones out that might be very good. And we're also working on new imaging techniques so that we can do this much faster. One of the things that may happen someday is, is smart, smart tissues and organs, that you could actually have sensors in the, in the tissue or organ that would tell you how it's doing. Let's say we want to make a heart someday. So we're actually putting little nanowires in, into it, where, which could sense signals. And they might be able to sense different things like oxygen or pH or other things. Someday you could actually have uh, it send signals to computers or some other type of monitoring device. So rather than wait for the fact that you might get a heart attack or a stroke or something like that, if this were to happen, you, it might tell you, you better go to the hospital and you know right away. I think whether it's my field or other fields, I mean, I think what happens in a lot of areas is a lot of times people could come up with some good ideas. You know, they could have a huge impact. But, but if they're really good ideas, a lot of times people are going to tell you that you're wrong or that you can never do it. And I think that's very rarely true. I think that, uh, you know, if you really persevere, if you keep trying, uh, there's, there's not a lot you can't do.